Uh, hi, everybody. Um, let me start our first One Startup World uh, sessions with today, Chiara uh, Rinaldi. Chiara Rinaldi is in Switzerland uh, and now, as you know, One Startup World is a global platform from all around the world. And Chiara is going to be our first, uh, actually, uh, startup um, in these sessions of three days. And um, we are eager to hear more about uh, Chiara's uh, startup ambition in fostering climate resilience, which is a hot topic, a very complex topic these days, especially you know when it comes to uh, sustainability and innovation. So very eager to hear more about how you, you address these uh, long-term sustainability challenges fostering AI in the mix, uh, as we all believe that technology in one way or another uh, is going to help humanity. So the floor is yours, uh, Chiara. Thank you very much, Stefan. And what an honor to be to be opening uh, this, uh, this uh, conference with this, uh, I'm sure, uh, very interesting days of, of learning of, from different experiences and, and startups. So what are we doing at Sustain Account? At Sustain Account, we want to enable a climate resilient built environment. And I'm sure that many will relate to what I'm about to uh, talk about. So in these last uh, days, we have been breaking records of uh, different things. Uh, apparently in June, according to the World Meteorological Organization, uh, June was the hottest days, uh, hottest month on the record. Uh, warmth in the North Atlantic, record low, uh, sea ice. Um, not the only thing. We just had um, uh, droughts and floodings, extreme exceptional rains causing uh, a lot of damage. Uh, this is in, in Italy, in Europe, but also in other parts of the world, uh, similar issues have been happening. And last week, we got for three days in a row, breaking record on record about the hottest day uh, ever recorded uh, on earth. So, all this is happening, so I don't need to continue on this. There are many other examples. Um, the uh, point being, uh, stopping emissions, we know that we have to do, and at the, end, at the same time, it's not enough. It's not enough because even if we stop tomorrow, climate change will continue to happen for quite a while, will uh, create uh, more extreme weather events, more frequent, more intense, and uh, um, also uh, there will be sea level rise and other things that will not stop the day that we stop emission. And that day, unfortunately, is not that close yet. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful and we get need to get ready because our built environment is not ready to withstand the impacts of climate change. All these events will have an impact and are unfortunately having an impact. In addition to this, um, so losses have been tremendous. This is in the past decade in, in Europe alone, 14 billions of um, losses due to climate related extreme weather events, and in the world, it's even more. And of course, regulation is uh, growing. Uh, here I have the, the Swiss and the European example, but in, in other countries around the world, it's the same. Regulation is increasing to ask for more transparency in relation to climate risk. And it's not for the sake of adding transparency on climate risk is to raise awareness because we need to prepare. We really need to get ready now because in a few years, we cannot change our, our built environment overnight. So what are we doing? What we are doing is we give real estate stakeholders 
actionable climate data, actionable climate information, so that they have the information they need to um, embed the resilience uh, in the buildings they are building or they are investing in or renovating and so on. Here is an example of a global portfolio that we assessed. Uh, each circle of different colors is a, a building or an infrastructure and the, the color coding is uh, you know similar of the one we know red is very very high risk green it's it's okay and yellow orange it's it's in between right so this allows companies this was an example of a company to really understand where in their value chain they have risks where in priority they should intervene to do something about their facilities. Uh, in addition to the dashboards that we have seen, we also have detailed reporting in which we really analyze uh, for each building or infrastructure, the specific situation uh, with uh, uh, scenarios at short term, medium term, long term, actually up to 2100, so that we try to show what could happen uh, in, in that environment. It's a, um, a SaaS solution, so software as a service, but can also be accessed as a, an API, so transferring data in between systems. And the advantage of what we do is that not only we assess the risk of a particular uh, building or infrastructure, we also propose measures on uh, allowing to increase the resilience. This is uh, just to give an example of a regulation. So the EU taxonomy is asking um, financial industry and companies uh, to uh, report on climate risk and vulnerability assessment if uh, a new building is created, it's renovated, or even there is simply a, a transaction or an ownership. But in order to know if that building is can be labeled as sustainable, this uh, undertaking of a climate risk and vulnerability assessment, this uh, uh, analysis has to be done. And we are one of the providers of, of this analysis. Um, the benefits, the benefits are, of course, first of First of all, increasing the resilience of the building. Uh, we really want to make sure that where we live and where we work, uh, and, and when I say we is the human, human beings, uh, we are safe. Um, in addition to that, of course, there are uh, financial advantages. It's, this is gonna be aligned with this increasing regulation. Uh, the, the, the attract attractiveness of these uh, buildings and infrastructure is going to increase, and also these assets will remain investable in the future, uh, because that is at risk as well. Uh, the market is growing. Uh, we see a huge potential for this type of analysis, uh, and, uh, and uh, this attention, of course, to climate topics will continue to increase. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much because it's very enlightful. It's very clear and structured, and this, uh, you know, give us a, a very good understanding of the problem statement and and the attractiveness and the pickup. Um, I'm just conscious of time, so I just want to make sure that you know we address uh, the attractions and you know the team and what you 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 tried to uh, to 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 raise and and how do you intend to move forward? And we we have a very, uh, as we know, uh, a time time boxed uh, a structure. So if you if you can speed up a little bit, it would be wonderful so that we can keep some questions for the end. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, the type of business model, usage based subscription model, and we have three type of target customers. And actually here. Uh, you see uh, some names. So we have been growing from December 2021 when we, the company was founded, uh, growing with our customers in, in delivering this, this value to them. 
Um, we are also uh, in different uh, consortium and partnership. Here it's an example. We are supporting the, the Swiss National Center for Climate Services in quantifying the impact of, of climate change for Switzerland. Um, some other partnerships that we have in place and um, the, okay, the, the differentiation I already mentioned a bit. So we provide not only climate risk, but also adaptation. So concretely, which measures? And also we go beyond the location to take into account building characteristics. Uh, that's a bit unique. So if a building has, you know, 10 stories, is underground parking, the risk is different. Uh, in, uh, we have my Christian, my co-founder, he has a climate physics and data analytics background, while I have a business and sustainability background. We have a great advisory board in climate science, real estate, and, and strategy overall around, the, around sustainability. And uh, our journey so far, while well, we have been growing with, with our customers, as I mentioned, and we what we need right now to go to the next level is uh, additional product development, um, uh, sales, of course, go to market, automation and, and additional partnerships and the geographic expansion. And actually, uh, we would be um, raising uh, some funds uh, exactly to reach, to reach this. And this is the end of my presentation. Happy to answer questions. Uh, th th thank you so much. So, um, well, I think I have one question before I, I looked at uh, the, the feedback from, from the audience. First question I have is that, you know, what exactly uh, is the level of funding that you're looking for? You know, for our investors, it's very important to understand at which stage you are in your journey. And, and how much you intend to raise this time around and, and basically what you, you intend to do uh, with it. That's uh, certainly one question I have. And another one is about uh, your competitors and how do you make sure that you stay ahead of the game and that uh, I understand that you are looking for enhancing your product uh, services. So those are the two actually immediate questions. Hi, yeah, thanks. Sure, sure. Well, for the details on the on the fund on the amount of funds, uh, please contact me. Uh, I prefer to keep it uh, on on a one to one basis. Um, but we have already some uh, some discussions ongoing, and uh, um, it's our first round. Right now, we have been growing with our own revenue, so we have full ownership. Uh, my co-founder and I have full ownership of the company, uh, so it's really an opportunity to onboard. Um, angel investor at this stage that are aligned with what we want to achieve and can really contribute um, to, to, to what, what we are doing. Uh, and the focus is really product and sales, further product and sales development. And in terms of differentiation, our competitors, of course, there are some competitors, but we, um, we really differentiate offering this two things. One is the adaptation and one is the, um, the, the, the building characteristics. And we uh, um, think we can stay ahead of the curve uh, because of our technology, because of the own um, proprietary database that we have been developing so far, uh, which puts us a bit um, ahead of the curve in, in, in this uh, very specific uh, type of, uh, of analysis. Okay, thank you so much. Well, here is a question that comes from the audience. Uh, uh, they ask, you know, how many people do you have today in your company? And, and uh, what would be in your mind the perfect uh, uh, equilibrium for you to, to, to scale this, this, this company? Because as you said, you are very global. So how do you mix foot on the, uh, boots on the ground, as they say, and, and your, your strategy uh, in going global? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now we are about 10, te 10 um, people team, um, and uh, uh, the idea is to keep the team relatively in size, relatively small. We will be growing on the two main things, so product and, and sales, of course, um, And uh, uh, but it's highly scalable, right? It's a software solution. So it will not grow with the amount of people, but rather on additional automation, additional um, um, 
additional features that leverage also AI technology. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the strategy is to, to grow the two main areas for the team, uh, but then uh, really um, leverage the, the SaaS solution to, uh, for further growth. Right, right. Well, which makes a lot of sense. But I mean, that's the beauty of SaaS. It has this power to scale with limited amount of, of people, I guess. Uh, the, 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 probably the second question I, I will pop up from, from the chat uh, might be the last one. But nonetheless, I think it's an interesting question. They, they ask how many uh, uh, potential uh, strategic investors you could envisage out of your client base. I think it's a very interesting question. That's that's a very very interesting question. And actually, yes, we are in discussion with some of our customers uh, because we see also this as a potential exit, of course, in medium term. Um, so it could be you know around five years plus minus that that we see a potential exit, potentially also with with one of our customers. That makes a lot of a lot of sense. Well, that's uh, a perfect way to, to end that uh, first session. As you said, you were the first of uh, one Startup World Summer Session 2023. So you're, we're very pleased to have you, uh, Chiara Rinaldi. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the explanation on Sustain account. And uh, we wish you all the best and hope to see you again in February for, for uh, a second uh, round. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks. Bye.